Shortcut number eight will really surprise you. That was a clickbait. I don't even know what shortcut eight is yet, but you know, number eight will really surprise you. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. And today we're going to be taking a look at a lot of keyboard shortcuts that are very beneficial, but uh, not everybody know about, especially beginners. The most important thing to note here is that, uh, of course, these shortcuts will be different, uh, slightly different between a Mac and a PC. Uh, so we're not going to be discussing the keyboard buttons that I use in order to um, trigger these shortcuts. I'm just directing your attention to the fact that these shortcuts exist in Resolve and you can use them in your workflow. Of course, you can set these shortcuts to any buttons you like, so we're not going to be discussing the actual combinations. I might mention what keyboard uh, buttons I use, uh, you know, to, to trigger these shortcuts, but um, uh, these are modified by me and you don't need to stick to the same uh, shortcuts I have. So let's zoom in and let's start with the first keyboard shortcut. For example, I'll copy this clip. So I just hit Command and V in order to copy the clip. Now, notice that if I move the playhead to this point, for example, so now the playhead is between these two clips, notice what will happen to this clip once I paste. So I'll hit Command and V and notice what will happen. That clip was removed from the timeline. So when we pasted the clip, it basically replaced all the other clips on the timeline, you know, where the new clip was added. However, you can change this behavior. Let's undo. And now notice that the clip is still copied. However, instead of hitting Command and V, I'll hit Shift Command and V and notice what happened. Resolve kept this clip on the timeline. It simply moved all the clips to the right in order to make place for this clip and it was added here. So by simply adding shift, you know, to the paste sequence, which is command V or control V on a PC, um, you will be sure that Resolve will not delete any of the clips on the timeline. It will just move everything, you know, to the right and insert the new clip in its place. The next keyboard shortcut is swap clips. So I have this clip here and maybe now I just want to move this clip before this one. So basically swapping these clips. So moving this one to the right and this one to the left. Usually this requires multiple steps of selecting the clips, moving them to the right, moving this one to the left and just closing the gaps. However, take a look at this. By using the swap clip keyboard shortcut, which in my case is set to shift command and I'm not sure what these buttons are, but now if I hit the keyboard shortcut, notice what's happening. I'm swapping this clip left and right without me doing anything. And this can even work with multiple clips. So if I select all these clips, and for example, again, I can move them to the left or right, and this will save you a lot of time when editing. In order to set a keyboard shortcut, simply, simply go to DaVinci Resolve menu, keyboard customization, and here you can search for swap clips towards left or towards right, and notice that we have the keyboard shortcuts here, and you can set them to whatever you want. Next, there's a keyboard shortcuts to move the clips up and down in the tracks, uh, you know, without you having to drag them manually. And this is important because it will preserve their uh, exact uh, location. Uh, if, if there was no snapping to keep the clip in place, this will make sure that you will not make any mistake. So for example, I click on this clip and now by using option up, notice that I'm moving the clip up or down on the timeline and I can select multiple clips and do the same thing. So this will make it much easier for me to move clips around without having to drag the clips using the mouse, which might cause me to move the clip by mistake to the left and right, like by a frame or two. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. Next, you can activate read time controls. So for example, if I want this clip to freeze at this exact frame, I can simply select this clip you know, cut it in half. So now we have the second part of the clip here to the right. And now in my case, by simply hitting shift and R, notice what happened. Resolve added a retime effect and actually posed this frame. So for example, if we play, once we get to this frame, notice that the clip now is frozen and this turned into a frozen frame. Now, this is not hard to do, but if you do it a lot, having keyboard shortcut will make things much faster. So this is one of the things that you can assign to a keyboard button. Also, you can use keyboard shortcuts to select different clips on the timeline. Notice that this is one of, I believe this is one of the uh, keyboard shortcuts that are not set by default and you have to 
uh, go actively and set it uh, yourself. So usually it's not assigned to any uh, buttons. So to set it, simply open the keyboard shortcut and search for next. And here under edit, if you go to select, there is an option to select next and select previous, which I set to shift command and N or B. So close and notice that if I select this clip now, if I hit shift command and B, I'm selecting the clip before it. Or if I hit shift command and N, I'm selecting the clip to the right. Sometimes this might be very helpful. So this will allow you to select any clip on the timeline by simply using a keyboard shortcut. The next one is very beneficial but it's a bit tricky. I can extend any edit. So for example, if I wanted to extend this clip to the position of the timeline, I can simply set a keyboard shortcut to extend edit. So you have to search for extend edit if you wanted to set this one. And I set it for shift and E, but notice nothing is happening. I'm hitting shift and E, and now this clip should be extended to the position of the playhead, but it's not. Why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. You have to select the edit point. So if I click here, notice that the edit point is green. So now the edit point is what's being selected. And now if I hit shift and E, notice that I extended the clip to the position of the timeline. The next one is one of my favorites. I use it all the time. So let's zoom in and let's move to this point, for example. And now notice that if I select this clip, there's an option to nudge the clip one frame left or right. Now to set this keyboard shortcut, simply open the keyboard shortcuts and look Look for nudge and here you have the option to nudge the clip one frame left or one frame right. So notice now if I select the clip and I hit the keyboard shortcut, I'm moving the clip or I can nudge it to the right. And this is extremely beneficial, especially if you're trying to sync audio manually sometimes. So let's zoom out and see it in action again. So this will allow me to move the clip left or right just using keyboard shortcuts. I also use the next one a lot, which is to render cache color output. We're not going to be discussing caching here. I've discussed uh, this concept in many videos, but uh, you can set it to a keyboard shortcut. But first, in order for this to work, just make sure to go to playback, render cache, and make sure it's set to user, not to none or smart, so user. And now if I wanted to render cache for this clip, for example, I can select it and simply by hitting R and notice that now Resolve is rendering cache for this clip. And for example, let's come to this clip. And for example, let's say we want to render it. I can simply hit R again. And now Resolve is rendering cache for this clip. This is extremely beneficial. Believe me, if you're working on a low-end system, this can save you a lot of time. Also, creating a compound clip is something that I don't use a lot, but it's very beneficial. So for example, you know that if you selected clips, you can right click and go to create new compound clip. Note that I set it to shift and C. So now every time I need to create a compound clip, for example, I can select these clips, simply hit shift and C, enter. And now we have a compound clip here in place. A compound clip is simply like, think of it like a folder, like a nested timeline, a folder that has many clips inside it. So in my case, it's set to shift and Z, but you can set it to whatever keyboard shortcut you like. Okay, the next three shortcuts are linked. I use them a lot, so but they're pretty simple. So the first one, uh, first of all, let's undo this to get the uh, clips back here. So the first one will set an endpoint on the timeline. So in my case, it's set to nine. Notice that when I hit number nine, we just set an endpoint on the timeline at the position of the playhead. And for example, I can move the playhead here. And now by hitting zero, I selected this part of the timeline. So I set an in and an out point. So great, now we have an in and out point. What do we do with them? The next keyboard shortcut is simply the single most used keyboard shortcut in my workflow. It's called ripple delete. So if I open the keyboard shortcuts window and I search for ripple delete, and you can see here it's in the edit menu and I set it to S. So now that we have the in and out points, if I hit simply the letter S on the keyboard, resolve deleted everything between the in and out points. So Resolve did multiple things here. It first deleted all the information uh, in, in the between the in and out point. It cleared the in and out point, so you don't have in and out points on the timeline anymore. And it deleted the gap uh, that it created all in one click. Let's take a look at an example of doing this manually. Let's undo. If I want to do this manually, I will have to select all these clips here, delete them, then I select all the clips to the right, delete the gap, then I have to clear the in and out points by going to mark and clear in and out. However, let's undo. Resolve did all this with simply one click of a button. So S deleted everything, closed the gap and cleared the in and out points. This might not sound impressive if you've been editing for a while, but uh, you won't believe the number of times like beginners look at this and they go, oh, that's cool. 
The next one is kind of weird. Uh, you know, sometimes you, like you have a video file that contains audio and you just want to render the audio without the video file. There's actually a keyboard shortcut that allows you to just to extract the audio from that video file without you doing anything. So for example, let's take a look at these files here. I have these files and they contain audio and I just want to extract the audio from the files. So I imported the files to resolve. So here's one of the files. I'll simply select the file. And now if we go to keyboard shortcuts and look for extract audio you can see that i have it set here to shift command and seven this is in media pool and it has a different keyboard shortcuts in media storage so let's use the one in the media pool so let's close i'll select the file in the media pool and now shift command and seven and nothing happened here however if we take a look at the files now notice that we have a new audio file it's a wave file that was created which is simply the audio from this clip extracted into an audio file this is not something you'll find yourself using often but whenever you need it it's extremely beneficial now let's move to the color page shortcuts uh, the next one is like it's i use this maybe even more than ripple delete actually i'm not sure but i use these most often now one of the things you'll find yourself doing a lot when color grading is using both the uh, regular color wheels and the log color wheels a lot and you need to switch between them now usually that's not a big thing uh, because you can simply click a button here so these are the regular color wheels and if I click here these are the primary color wheels so big deal I can just keep on clicking however when you're concentrating on your work and you're working fast you really want to be able to switch automatically between them like uh, not automatically using a keyboard shortcut really fast so personally I have it set to option and Z so notice how I'm switching between both color wheels so now let's work on the image a bit I'll maybe like increase gain uh, reduce gamma a bit whatever and now i need to switch to the uh, log wheels so by simply hitting option and z now i can work on the shadows in a more precise manner maybe work on midtones and work on highlights then maybe i can just send command and z to control lift so being able to switch in a fast manner between both uh, sets of color wheels you'll find this extremely beneficial because at least personally when i'm working i switch a lot between these two sets of wheel like with a crazy frequency and just being able to do that using a keyboard shortcut is extremely beneficial to me the next one is extremely cool now if i open the color panel and go to presets notice that here i have six vector green yellow red magenta blue and cyan these are simply uh presets so if you activate one of the presets it, the qualifier and resolve will automatically select a particular color instead of you having to work on selecting the color manually. But notice that we have six different uh, selections here and we do not need to create six different keyboard shortcuts. The cool thing here is that you can select one of them and morph it into the others very easily. Let's take a look at an example. So notice here I only have one keyboard shortcut which is G set only to six victor green. Now, I'm simply going to hit G on the keyboard and activate highlights mode and notice that resolve selected green. However, using the center controller here, I can move it left or right fast to select all the other colors precisely with one keyboard shortcut. So, for example, if I want to select red, let's reset here. I'll simply hit G for green and now I'll just move the center controller to select red, for example. Or I can move the controller to select blue or cyan or any other color. That makes your work much faster. So simply one keyboard shortcut and just move one controller and you can literally select any color really fast. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. The next one is uh, one that we discussed a lot, which is basically auto color. So in Resolve, if you come to this image here, for example, there is this button to the left here. If I click it, it will simply auto correct the image. It doesn't look super flattering or correct, but it just makes your work much faster. However, this keyboard shortcut is very interesting because if you set auto color to a particular button, in my case, I set it to B. You can now color correct footage really fast from the edit tab. So let's move to the edit tab, maybe for example, come on top of this clip here. And now notice, even though I'm in edit, if I click this one letter B, 
now uh, resolve corrected the image really fast take a look at the image before and after before after and it's not the best in the world but it makes your work much easier in the edit tab you don't have to go and color correct every image and once you're done with your edit you can go back and like tweak um, all the color settings you want the next one also is one of the most beneficial ones so for example if i like the colors of this image here of course i know that i can right click and select grab still however i usually set it to a keyboard shortcut so let's select the still delete it and now by simply hitting shift command and g i can get a gallery still fast and easy and for example if i change the colors even more so for example let's make the colors really yellow again i can just get another one and maybe make the image really blue i can get another one and now i have have many gallery stills to compare in order to save the color changes I make. This is extremely beneficial because you might be working on many styles for an image and this will make your work much faster. However, that's not the only way to save the colors of an image. There is the versioning system in Resolve. We're not going to be discussing it here, but in order to add a new color grading version, I personally use the keyboard shortcut of Y. So for example, now I have this image here. Now if I click Y, I added another color grading version and if Y, I added another one and now if I click here and make sure I'm on color grading versions these are the versions I just added so for example this one let's make it really bright make it yellow and now by hitting Y I just added another one maybe let's just make this one really blue and add, by hitting Y I added another one now let's make this one really dark and reduce our saturation Y and another color grading version this also will make your life much much easier when you're working because for example let's take a look at this image I like the colors here but I'm not sure if these are the exact colors I want but simply by hitting Y now I have another version and maybe let's just make this a bit darker add contrast and increase saturation and maybe reduce the highlights a bit now we have another version let's add click Y add another one and maybe let's just make this one a bit more yellow and now notice that we have multiple versions for color grading for this image and we can keep on refining our colors this way but assigning this to a keyboard shortcut um, makes things much easier next if you open the keyboard shortcuts and search for switch to page notice here that we can set any keyboard shortcut to move between the different pages so for example shift and eight in my case is color and shift and seven is edit so by simply hitting shift and eight i move the color and edit using a keyboard shortcut again this might be something that you find very handy i rarely use this one but um, it's very interesting the next one shouldn't be categorized as a keyboard shortcut however i find myself using it a lot to the point where i had to assign a keyboard shortcut for it so it's basically the uh, time code window so notice that if you go to uh, workspace there's an option here to activate the time code window if you open it this is a time code window that will just make your life easier especially if you're working with a client and you want to put this window like on a different screen to keep it up all the time this is extremely beneficial however when i'm working on small screens i usually find myself using it a lot so i set the keyboard shortcut of shift command and eight so shift command and eight to show or hide the time code window and finally one of the most important keyboard shortcuts cinema viewer notice that in resolve if you go to workspace uh, let's actually move to this clip here this will make things much easier to understand so let's go to workspace and here if you go to viewer mode you have the cinema viewer if i select this option resolve will simply go to a full screen mode allowing me to watch the film in full screen so i set this one to the letter c on the keyboard because it's really close to the uh, space bar and it allows me to switch very fast between full screen mode and no full screen mode so for example if i want to check this image in full screen all i have to do is hit c then space and now i'm seeing it in full screen and then i can simply hit c again to get out of this mode and the fact that the letter c is very close to the space bar makes this extremely fast and easy for me so all the time i go okay so let's take a look at this image here for example let's move to this one play and it basically became a habit of using the letter c and the space bar uh, you know to watch things in full uh, screen mode all the time maybe this is the one that uh, beginners usually find impressive because uh, it's like having two screens that you can switch between really fast instead of you having to you know uh, use like a complicated keyboard shortcut or like uh, using the menus i hope you found this helpful if you found it helpful please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join uh, our free davinci resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginners and will take you through every tab in resolve thank you filmsimplified.com